While the political choices of the rebellion and then New Republic were crucial to securing their position as the dominant faction in a post-imperial galaxy, military campaigns to liberate, isolate, and connect territory, depending on the needs of the day, played an equally key role. The earliest campaigns in the days after Endor, while the Empire was busy fracturing, were actually against several non-imperial threats, invading from outside the typical bounds of the known galaxy. After brief campaigns fighting off the Siruvi, Nagai, and Toph, testing the metal of the New Republic fleet against new targets, the focus returned to uprooting the still overpowering presence of the Galactic Empire throughout the galaxy. In this video, we'll be breaking down the early New Republic campaigns against the Imperial forces, leading up to the start of the push for Coruscant, covering three years from the Battle of Endor in 4 ABY, or after the Battle of Yavin, to 6 ABY. Following the death of the Emperor, the New Republic fleet under Supreme Commander Admiral Akbar began its push to unify and standardize. What used to be a series of allied cells with varying levels of coordination now needed to be a well-coordinated singular fleet. While individual squadrons within the fleet still maintained some level of their earlier self-determination early on, Akbar's first major organizational change was the creation of four main fleets. The first fleet operated out of the region known as the Western Reaches from the planet Saijo under the command of the stern Admiral Firmus Nance. The second fleet was nominally under the command of Admiral Hiram Drayson and was responsible for the protection of the vital Mon Calamari shipyards, though in practice Drayson's responsibilities often meant command duties were delegated to officers under him. Namely, Admirals Kalbak, Ragav, and Namo, all of whom were from Mon Calamari themselves. The third fleet was under Akbar's direct command, and was based initially out of Bothawui until the liberation of Kashyyyk. Finally, the fourth fleet also began based out of Bothawui under the command of Duros Admiral Vun Masa. This would remain the primary organization structure of the New Republic's fleet throughout its lifetime, aside from the introduction of the fifth fleet in the year 16 ABY. The New Republic commanders under Akbar and Mon Mothma had devised a strategy where, rather than a sector by sector clearing of the galaxy, they would fight along major hyperspace routes to connect their territory, link up with planets that may want to secede from the Empire, and isolate different warlord leaders, allowing rapid response of their own forces while temporarily avoiding too many major engagements. The first targets of the New Republic's mobilization along these lines were the Ariadu Authority of Sander Del Vardis, based in the rich Outer Rim world of Ariadu, and a more minor warlord named Prentiok whose dominion lay primarily in the Sombir sector along the important Corellian trade spine. One of First Fleet's generals, Tyr Taskeen, commanded the Glova campaign, working with Celestians to push south of the Ariadu Authority, separating them from potential allies in the Outrood sector. While Nance himself took the other elements of the First Fleet north to Abraxas, fighting a group known as the I-2 Pirates, before moving on to fight Prentiok's forces at Chrysalis. After the victories at Chrysalis and Abraxas, Nance followed through with the second part of the New Republic strategy, avoiding any engagements with worlds that were too fortified, by bypassing the more fortified Bomas Cori system and instead engaging elements of Del Vardis's fleet at the inner rim world of Morgia. Morgia proved to be one of the first major victories of the New Republic. At this battle, the New Republic forces consisted primarily, if not exclusively, of Nebulon Bs under the command of Firmus Nance, and Y Wing bombers commanded by Admiral Adar Talon. Despite this limited composition, they were able to defeat one of Del Vardis' fleets, including his own flagship, the Praetor II-class battlecruiser Thalassa. Del Vardis himself was either not present at the battle or managed to escape, but this, along with the Glova campaign of Tyr Teskeen from earlier, essentially ended any hope for Del Vardis of uniting with other Imperial forces in the region. With Del Vardis and Prentiox subdued, the first fleet turned their sights east to the Corellian run in connecting with the third and fourth fleets of Bothan space. In the process, hoping to isolate another of the major warlords, Moff Parlenkin of the Lomba Sector. This push, known as the Hevral Campaign, saw first fleet forces under General Tyr Taskeen as their force commander assaulting Banistar Station, a large refueling depot which had previously been partially destroyed in a rebel raid before they moved on to the planets of Kalarba and Glom Tho, where Taskeen destroyed a whole Imperial flotilla to secure the rest of the sector. Now cut off from access up the Corellian run, Lankin's Lambda sector was never able to play any major role in the war against the New Republic, despite surviving the next three years. With Nant securing the western reaches up through the Corellian run, Akbar set his sights on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk, longtime sympathizers of the rebel cause who had been suffering extensively 
under both Palpatine's rule and the slaving and hunting of their species which continued afterwards. Engaging forces commanded by Grand Admiral Pakati Sin and Moff Hidane Dark, Akbar's flagship Home One and Captain Varric of the MC Liberty type Maria were able to destroy the flagship of Grand Admiral Sin and ultimately win the battle. Bothan Subterfuge had played a key role in this victory, having convinced Grand Admiral Sin that aid would be coming from Teradox Greater Maldrude, and sabotaging two of the Grand Admiral's interdictor cruisers. Kashyyyk, aside from being such a staunch ally, became a staging point for many of the New Republic's most successful campaigns, further isolating Greater Maldrude in the north, and the planet replaced Bothawai as the home base for Akbar's Third Fleet. The New Republic's continued success had encouraged them to attempt even bolder moves, as planning began for a strike into the core. The first target for this was the commerce hub of Brental in the Bormia sector, also the location of Mon Mothma's home planet Chandrilla. Commanded by Akbar and Rogue Squadron, this was also done in cooperation with forces from the planet Rakopia, a less important core world which had been one of the first to declare open support for the New Republic after Endor and which proved to be a strong partner and important launching point of many core battles. The Battle of Brental was a resounding success, but had several dimensions contributing to it which aided the New Republic and were emblematic of the Empire's problems at the time. Lon Isoto, the commander of the Brental Defense, was largely viewed as incompetent. He'd been deployed there by Yassan Isard, who had hoped the New Republic victory would discredit Sate Pessage, the interim leader of the Empire after Palpatine's death, whom she hoped to replace. Baron Suntir Fell, one of the Empire's most skilled pilots, was also present at the battle, and despite his knowledge of Isard's manipulations, attempted to salvage the situation for the Empire and for the citizens of Brental. He was captured by the New Republic and, disillusioned by recent events, joined his former rivals in Rogue Squadron. Beyond simply being a rich core world, Brental was important for one more key reason. It was positioned along both the Prelimian Run and the Hygian Way, two very important hyperspace lanes heading into the north, meaning it opened many possibilities for future campaigns. With these successes, Voonmoss's fourth fleet, also based on Bothawai, was finally ready to strike. They began their campaign attempting to link up with the Hevral forces of First Fleet. From Bothawai, they headed west to the industrial center of Druckenwell, positioning themselves to move farther up the rim in support of the Third Fleet's operations. Despite the stellar success of the odd First and Third Fleets, even the New Republic couldn't win everything. Second Fleet, while nominally under the control of Hiram Drayson, was in practice commanded by the three aforementioned Calamari officers Kalbek, Namo, and Ragab. Aided by General Sam, a bomber commander who had served at Brental, the forces of the Calamari sector were able to secure the nearby planets of Hast and Emmer. Before they could execute planned assaults against Zinj's northern borders, Hast, which had served as a secret supplementary shipyard refitting several ships, including multiple captured Star Destroyers, was raided by Admiral Lon Bangir on Zinj's orders, stalling any northern progress and keeping the second fleet isolated in the north, as the 30 capital ships which had been damaged in the raid underwent repairs. While this was the first major failure of the New Republic, it wouldn't be the last, and it was a sign of things to come when dealing with the more powerful northern warlords. While quick early action had helped stall out the creation of any major warlord states in the southern half of the galaxy, which had been the home of more rebel fleets and had been abandoned by Grand Moff Artis Kane, who controlled over Sector Outer, formerly encompassing the entire Outer Rim as he retreated to much smaller northern holdings, the same strategies would not work in the north. Kane's northern Pentastar alignment, Zinj's empire, and Teradox Greater Maldrude all had sufficient time and resources to secure their own territory, and posed a much greater challenge. As the galaxy entered the next year, 5 ABY, many of these emerging states remained secure, and the New Republic continued its push towards the Imperial Core from the east. First, Voon Massa and the fleet at Druckenwell resumed their movement up the Corellian Run to the planet Milagro, beginning a three-month siege between General Durin Vertag of the New Republic and Uther Kerman of the Empire, who would stymie New Republic progress for the next two years. He ultimately retreated from Milagro, but that retreat involved slagging most of it from orbit. He then counterattacked, nearly capturing Mon Mothma before being pushed by Massa further up to the planet Spirana. In the first campaigns for the Third Fleet in 5 ABY, Akbar handed over the reins to Admiral Kalbak, formerly one of the commanders of the Second Fleet, as well as Willem Burke, 
Together, these two launched a successful invasion of the Greater Maljud at Tagoria and liberated Lantilles, where, with allied forces from the nearby Contrum, they established a second part of their presence on the Perlimian trade route, rimward of Brental. After securing a hard-fought victory against Imperial Admiral Ledra Okins at Kola and Pindra, Willem Burke was able to make his way down the Perlimian trade route connecting Lantilles, Chazwa, and Brental. Nance's fleet, meanwhile, continued cleanup operations at the north end of the Rima trade route, launching from Morja to capture Typhera and Yagdal, allowing access to Merlist and Silpar, two planets who had rebelled on their own. This region was also home to Fondor, one of the primary shipbuilding worlds of the galaxy, which also soon fell to the New Republic, alongside further territory coreward of the Corellian trade spine. The benefits of the New Republic's hyperspace lane conquering strategy soon demonstrated themselves in a big way. Delvaris, who had been penned into the southern territory held by Ariadu, ignored the pleading of many of his allies, including the famous General Maximilian Veers, to simply retain what they had held and attempted to assault the rebel shipyards at Sullust. A Celestian captain within the First Fleet, Cien Sov, who would later become the supreme commander of the New Republic forces, rebuffed the attack while Nance sent reinforcements up the Corellian trade spine pushing back yet more of Devardis' isolated territory. As the forces of Sov and Nance linked up, a series of battles were waged on the fringes of Ariadu space until Delvardis, having lost not only the majority of his territory, but also some of his best commanders including Shea Hublin at the Battle of Sinrafsix, retreated to the Deep Core with a small portion of his former forces and the half-built Executor-class Star Destroyer Night Hammer becoming the first of the major warlords to be entirely eliminated in the wider galaxy outside of the Deep Core. Admiral Kalbach and his flagship the Justice continued to have similar luck to their days in the Second Fleet while making their first moves against Zinj. Kalbach had been hoping to take some of Zinj's fringe territory towards the core of the Hydean Way. He was instead met by none other than the Warlord himself, commanding the Executor-class Iron Fist. Facing impossible odds, Kalbach retreated back down his invasion vector, linking up with Luke Skywalker's task force at Obra Sky, and instead launching a far more successful attack on Lord Shadowspawn, another warlord based on Mindor. With help from the Mandalorians, they were able to secure this victory, but Kalbak was unfortunately killed in the battle. While Kalbak was probably the first of the high-ranking New Republic officers to die in these campaigns, he would not be the last. Firmus Nance's campaigns in the south continued to go well, including a trek in 6 ABY, back down from Morja towards Bomas Cori to wipe out Prentiok's forces, before planning yet more incursions into the core from the south. Vun Masa and the 4th fleet were not so fortunate. Uther Kerman, who Masa had defeated at Malagro and Spirana, was commanding the defense of Denon, further up the Corellian run, against Masa's fleet, and while the New Republic eventually did win the battle, it came at the cost of Masa's life. It was only later under Admiral Cheldorat that the New Republic was finally able to break the line and take Denon, setting themselves up with a third major hyperlane route into the core. Willem Burke and General Bren Tantor isolated the core even further by attacking from Kashyyyk down towards the important shipyard world of Jindin, Raitha, and also taking Commodore, which had been bypassed on the initial approach to Brental. With the second fleet tied up in Mon Calamari space, first fleet's successful elimination of Prentiok and Delvardis' forces, and third fleet's position established at Danan, the third fleet began preparations for the eventual taking of Coruscant. Despite the earlier failure by Kalbak, Akbar hoped to isolate Coruscant further by pushing Zinj further back along the Hygiene Way. Brintal was planned to be used as their launching point, given its aforementioned position on both the Prelimian and the Hygiene Way, and while the fleet was successful at first, pushing up through Uvio Exin and Driaria, Zinj managed to secure a major victory at Pokalis against Admiral Ragab, formerly also of the Second Fleet, preventing further isolation of Coruscant, raising the threat assessment of Zinj in the New Republic, and forcing Akbar to think of alternative approaches. While following these major lanes as they had been so far would probably have been preferable, an alternative did exist. A minor trade route in the northwestern end of the core, called the Nemadii Corridor, going through Coruscant up towards Kane's as yet neutral Pentastar alignment. Moving from the recently acquired Uvu Exin, Akbar established a new front along this corridor at Palanhi. Behind their lines, the shipyard world of Bilbringi became a new target. Admiral Namo, the third of the initial Second Fleet commander trio who had been thwarted in the first year, was sent as commander of a Third Fleet force to Bilbringi, where the first Battle of Bilbringi, at a planet which would later see the final Battle of the Thrawn campaign, 
became the site of the first major Imperial victory in some time not tied to Warlord Zinj. Admiral Terran Rogress, who would later cooperate with Han Solo against Warlord Zinj, and Turfanir, who replaced Zuntir Fell in the 181st Fighter Wing, were able to defeat Namo and retain control of the shipyards. While they were still separated from Coruscant, they retained a connection to the Northern Imperial Territories, which would lend their support to Thrawn and set up for his eventual defeat at those shipyards. Despite these setbacks, by 6 ABY the New Republic had positioned itself in command of most major hyperlanes leading into the core. They'd eliminated the threat posed by almost all Southern Warlords, and through their successes had inspired more confidence in their regime and drawn even more worlds to their side. Only Coruscant stood in the way of being recognized as the true legitimate galactic government. Despite a hard road still laying ahead, the Namadi Corridor would prove to be the key to securing that prize. Thank you for watching this video on the early campaigns of the New Republic. Maybe I'll be able to do a follow-up one going over the road to Coruscant itself. I'm hoping to use these map assets for other future campaigns, so if there's one you particularly want to see brought to life, especially one that may not have been laid out in a source book like this one was, let me know in the comments. Most of the 3D work on this particular video went into the building of the map, so hopefully in the future that'll mean more of the time can be spent on rendering different battle scenes, although I do hope to continue to make improvements to the map assets as well. If you have enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. I recently did a much shorter video on some of the political elements which helped the New Republic in this period, namely the Defense Declaration, so consider giving that a watch if you're still interested in learning more about this period. While I've pulled from a bunch of different sources for the details on this video, the bulk of the information and the specific fleet movements come from the Essential Atlas and Essential Guide to Warfare, where an artist named Modi created the maps that I've replicated in animated form for this video. They're really cool books, so definitely check them out. I'll note this in the comments as well, but some of the characters shown in this video do not have an official canon image, so in a few instances, like Voon Masa, I used another image of a member of their species. That's going to do it for now though, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.